Oh, hello! My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Whoa. Okay, so I feel like I'm maybe one of the last people to do this video, which is the mid-year book freakout tag, and it's a mainstay here on booktube. And I am just like real, I can't help it. Like I can't do it until we actually have passed the mid-year point or like I can't fully get myself to do it until that has happened. And I'm actually filming this a little bit before what is technically the midpoint of the year, but I just gave in and, and went for it. But all that to say, I know a lot of people have already done this tag. So I thought to maybe mix it up a little bit, we would do this in the style of like, get ready with me. So I'm going to do the tag. I'm gonna be doing my makeup. This is like the time of day where I get ready. So like usually I have to get up early to take calls with Europe. And then after that, I actually like finish getting ready. So it is that time of morning and I thought that we could get ready together and I could do this wonderful tag. I have information for the creators of this tag, the original creators of this tag in the description box along with all of the questions. So with all that being said, let's get into this. Okay, question number one is best book you've read so far in 2020. Well, it's a little bit of a toss up. I do have three five star books so far this year out of the, I think, 140 I've read so far. Wow, that's a lot. Um, so I've only got three that I've given a full five stars to, and those are A Princess in Theory, Jane Doe, and Take a Hint, Danny Brown. If I had to pick one, I think I would go with Jane Doe by Victoria Helen Stone, just because this is like a, such a weird book that I loved. It's not going to be a book for everyone, but it's really just like, it's sold as sort of like a mystery, which I guess technically maybe it is, but it's really just sort of like a character study of a woman who is a sociopath. It's like a thriller revenge kind of situation. So like, yeah, I guess it's technically a mystery, but I kind of just think of it as general fiction because really the main star of the show is the main character and you're mostly just like in her head and seeing the world through her eyes. It's a very specific, strong flavor, so it's not gonna be a book that everybody loves, but it was definitely one that I really loved. It became definitely, it's like become an all-time favorite for sure. So I would say, yeah, Jane Doe, I'm gonna say if I had to pick one is my very best book of the year so far. Hopefully I'm going to have more that I love as much. Okay, question number two is the best sequel you've read so far in 2020. Oh, that is so hard because I actually read a lot of really good kind of like books in series or follow-ups. I mean, I really like Network Effect by Martha Wells, but I think I would actually go with Alpha Night by Nalini Singh, because this book got me out of a reading slump I was in. It's just such a good example of that series, and it's like the 18th or 19th book. So just the fact that we're that far into the series, and I'm still so excited for a book in it is pretty great. It also, I think, is going to inspire a reread of that series, or at least of the books that I love in that series. Um, it's just like such a great distillation of what that series does really well, which is great, like very memorable characters, uh, a lot, like a ton of different variations on the idea of a faded mate and like how that could play out in sort of a paranormal or urban fantasy kind of book. But then it also has like political machinations, like that is, the plots are always like political thriller plots. And I love that. So it just, it's so many things I love and it just made me really happy. Okay, and then next is, let's see, new release you haven't read but want to. Ugh, well, this is just like so difficult to try to decide because there's so many, like I've not done a great job of keeping up with all of the new releases that I have pre-ordered. I try, but I, I know I've been failing a little bit there. Failing is too strong. I'm just not... Uh, being as diligent about that as I would normally like to be so that is a bummer but if I had to pick one or two I mean like Deathless Divide definitely that is one that comes to mind from Justina Ireland um, but let's see if I had I don't oh I actually I do know the one that I would pick let's go with The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin because I really 
want to get to this. I very much enjoyed, I read her collection called How Long Till Black Future Month at the end of last year. And there was a short story in that that I was like, oh, I bet that's gonna be the basis for this book. And I really like that short story. I would very much like to get to this book. So hopefully I can prioritize this. I have, if you guys didn't see, I've given myself permission until like Labor Day to do much more mood reading than I have been doing. So I think the mood for this will hopefully strike pretty soon. Segues nicely into the next question, which is all about like new, re most anticipated releases, right? Yeah, number four, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. <sighs> so hard because there's a number of them that I would very much like to get to like ones that come to mind so I have an arc I have an e-arc of Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse which has got to be pretty high up there in terms of books that I would like to that I'm most excited about for the rest of the year there's a new Alona Andrews coming out Emerald Blaze that's exciting uh, there's a new Alyssa Cole thriller which I've never read a thriller from her before but like you bet your sweet macaroons that I am excited to experience whatever that book is gonna be. So I am excited for that. Uh, the new Ruth Ware. So I've actually never read Ruth Ware, but her new one this year is going to be a Isolated Close Circle Mystery, which y'all be knowing is my deal. So I'm excited for that. I, I will have, actually we're coming up on when it's time for me to do a, a video of my most anticipated releases for the rest of the year. So look for that here in the next few weeks. I will definitely get to that. But if I had to pick just one, I think I would have to say that uh, Burning God by R.F. Kuang is probably the single one that I am most excited for just because it will be the ending of the Poppy War trilogy. And I have a good feeling that she's going to stick the landing. I really loved, like, I gave both of the first two books in that series four stars because there was something in them pacing wise that was, I thought, a little bit off. But together, I would give them like a four and a half or a five star. So I'm really hoping that this last book is as good as those first two. And then I can just like full throatedly be like, yes, I love the Poppy War series. It's so good. Everybody should give it a try if they can deal with like some definitely very grim, grim dark fantasy. Uh, so I think I would have to say that if I had to pick just one that I'm most excited about. Next is number five is Biggest Disappointment, which there's been some disappointments. I will say I, w I should take this moment and mention on whole, actually, I think this has been a very, very good reading year for me so far. I don't think... I've not had as many things that I just like, ooh, like loved. There's some years where I have like just a bunch of really high highs. And as I mentioned, I think I've only given out three full five stars this year so far, but I've had quite a number of 4.5s. And I would say overall, if I, if I was guessing right now, I've had more four stars than I normally do. So I'm reading a lot of things that I really enjoy, even if they aren't perfect or all-time favorites or favorites of the year, they're books that I really like. So actually, I don't feel like overall I have all that many disappointments, um, but I think if I had to pick, I think I would go with uh, Normal People by Sally Rooney. And the reason is that I put this on my five-star book prediction list last year. I was really expecting to love this because I was expecting it to be l like a literary romance. Um, and maybe it is. I didn't get far enough in it to really know. I DNF'd it at I think about 50 pages because I could not, could not deal with the writing in it. I think that it's something that other people probably aren't as bothered by, but for me, it just really was not my gig. I just didn't like the authorial voice is kind of what it boils down to. But also on a trivial note, it didn't have quotation marks and I just, it bothered, it bothers me when I see that. It's a very, I feel like it's a European literary thing to make the book fancier. I don't know why it's done, but I, I personally don't really enjoy it. So yeah, that one I think was definitely the most disappointing. I'm about to attempt a uh, foundation technique I've never done before, which is you don't blend out your concealer, you apply your foundation over the concealer. We'll see how this goes. Okay, number six is biggest surprise and oh man, okay. I've had a lot of things I think that were surprises. Oh, I bet I know what I'll pick. Okay, in terms of other things that I found surprising, I was surprised at 
how much I love like the Light Brigade, for instance, from Cameron Hurley, because that was a part of my Operation Sci-Fi and I ended up just like loving that in a way that I, you know, didn't necessarily expect to. So, so that was definitely a big surprise. Actually, I do like this. This gives a, the reason in theory you, you do this is to give more like coverage and to have like a smoother application. I'm not mad at it. Gotta tell you, it looks pretty good in person. Um, so that one comes to mind, but I think that the biggest surprise I would say I had was The Warden by Anthony Trollope. And the reason I say this is such a surprise is that I was expecting to like it okay, but I'd kind of gotten the vibe from people of like, okay, you've got to read this in this Barchester, Barsetcher, whatever the series is called. You've got to read this first one because like, it's the first one, but keep going. Even if you don't like it, like keep going to Barchester Towers because this one isn't the best one, but it's like, you got to read it. And I actually really enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. I think it's idiosyncratic to my own like taste and um, kind of like the subject matter was very interesting to me. So I don't think this would be a book everybody would love, but it was definitely a book I really enjoyed. And I love the writing. I really love the character. Like I just, I gave this four stars. It's not like perfect, but it surprised me how much I enjoyed it because I was expecting it to be a sort of like, eh, okay, you kind of got to push through this one to get to the good stuff. But I felt like this was part of the good stuff. Okay, next is favorite new author. Ugh. I guess like, okay, it says debut or new to you. And I think I'll probably have to just go with new to me because off the top of my head, I can't think of whose debuts I was reading this year. I haven't paid that much attention to that. New to me authors. Um, authors that I'm intrigued to keep reading from either in their series or just like from them in general, I would say Emily Henry because I really enjoyed Beach Read and I thought the authorial voice and that was a big part of what made it so great. I definitely want to keep reading in the Witcher series from Andrzej Sapkowski, uh, also the um, Farseer trilogy from Robin Hobb, and both of those, a big part of what I liked about them was the writing itself, or like kind of the type of books or the type of project it was. So I think both of those are Katie Martin, because I really enjoyed a memory called Empire, and I would definitely read more from her. So yeah, I think there's a few authors that I tried for the first time this year who's either their series or their just books in general are of interest to me to continue with. And then number eight is newest fictional crush. And I've got to tell you, normally, this is, uh, this is a category that I'm sort of like, ugh, like I don't really do that. That's just not usually how I read a book. But this year, I actually do have an answer because there was one dude in a in a romantic pairing that I was just like, this person could not be more my type. Like, this is like the fictional version of like what what I'm into. And that was Zaff and Take a Hint, Danny Brown, like yummy beefy daddy, emotionally fluent, loves romance novels, big rugby player dude who teaches young boys how to play rugby and also teaches them to fight the patriarchy, uh, loves the heroine because of how smart and sassy she is. Like could Zaff could not be more my type could not be more my type so I would definitely say him and also just like he him with Danny is just so good <laughs> I love this book so much guys like I hope people are reading it it's out now you can read it it's this month we need diverse romance pick so like if you read romance at all what are you doing please go pick this up and then the next one is newest favorite character and I think I because what I love about this book is the character, like the main character. It's kind of gotta be Jane Doe, I think. I feel like it sort of has to be her because like the experience of reading that book is mostly an experience of like me falling in love with her. And again, her just being a very distinct character that I've not read a lot of in fiction before. Like she's, she's pretty different than characters I normally read. I would say the character she reminds me most of is the female main character in the library at Mount Char. It's sort of a similar kind of headspace and you guys know I love the library at Mount Char. That's one of my favorite books ever. So it kind of makes sense that there's another character kind of in that same that I really enjoyed. So I would say, yeah, Jane Doe probably has to be the answer here. Okay, and then number 10 is a book that made you cry. Uh, that's not that hard for a book to do. I'm I'm a softie and I tend to channel my emotions through media that I consume. So 
Yeah, I, I could think of probably a bunch. What's one that's made me cry recently? I guess we could go with Exhalation by Ted Chiang. So I got emotional at a few points in this book, but really there's one story called Um Follows, I believe. And it just hit me where I live. I related to it so, so much. And the last line of it reminded me so much of my favorite moment in Jane Eyre, like my favorite monologue of hers. And it just made me like literally burst into tears. So that's one that I think I can think of recently that definitely made me cry. And then conversely, a book that made me happy. Ah, oh, again, so many. I mean, I think you just saw my pure joy with Take a Hint, Danny Brown. I would say that is definitely one of the books that made me happy the most this year. I would say that or probably Network Effect. Both of those are ones that literally just made me like smile ear to ear the entire time I was reading them. It was just like spending time with characters that I love and just the sheer joy of, of being in their bookish presence made me just so happy. Take a hand, Danny Brown, just like I was talking about earlier from just like I really connected with both of the main characters. And then Network Effect is like coming back to a warm, cozy hug of a book because Murderbot is my heart. Y'all know how much I love Murderbot. I like am a proselytizer for the good news of Murderbot. <laughs> I've had, I just have so many people constantly telling me like, oh, I read Murderbot because of you and it was great. And I'm like, see, I would not lead you astray when it comes to the good news of sweet, sweet Murderbot. So that is probably, uh, those are probably the two that made me the most happy this year so far. Let's see here, number 12, the most beautiful book I've bought or received. I guess it kind of depends on how you define most beautiful or however we want to kind of frame that. Oh, the sun has decided to come out. How nice. Okay, let's look over here. These editions of the Farseer trilogy from Robin Hobb are just beautiful and I did buy two, like the second and third in the trilogy. They're just gorgeous. The whole, I think the entire, what is it called? The World of the Elders or the Elderlings. I think all of these have these covers, like all those books have these covers. And they're just like super, super gorgeous, like a real treat, I feel like, to look at. You guys know I normally prefer to collect in hardback um, just because they stand up better over time. But in this case, I just can't, I can't deny how wonderful and beautiful these paperbacks are. So that's going to be the edition I collect. Oh, okay. And then number 13 is what are the books that you need to read by the end of the year? And you guys know I kind of am on somewhat of a break from like my strict TBR situation I had going. But in terms of things that I would like to read by the end of the year, well, the things I need to read are, are any arcs that I have. And I think right now I have about... Oh man, sorry, the sun like all of a sudden is out. I think in terms of number of arcs I still have to read that I have, there's maybe like 12 to 15-ish right now. If I were guessing, I think I'm gonna get another probably 10. So there's a chunk of my reading there. Then Operation Sci-Fi, I'm still excited for and definitely I'm still plan like working on planning to finish. And that is six books left on that, I think. I then also want to finish up all of the Christie's that I haven't finished yet. I'm actually in progress on two of them, but I have five total, like I have those two and then another three. So I'm hoping to do that. I do hope that I still am able to read another two or three from my classics list that I picked at the beginning of the year. And then I don't know if I'm fully going to go back to my 20 books I want to read in 2020 list. I'm kind of on the fence. I do expect that I'll read at least some of the things from that but I'm less invested in that this year than I, ha I was last year. Like it's just not been as much of a priority. So I have that. I have other little challenges here or there that I think I'll do, but I think that that is probably a lot of what I will be reading. And then I do hope I can just really lean into mood reading and reading new releases. I'm excited about things like that. Alrighty, so those are all of the questions and I'm also done with my makeup. This is the look, it's pretty simple for a work day. Uh, but yeah, that was my mid-year book freakout tag with a little bit of a twist. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. I enjoyed making it. Yeah, I think my takeaway from looking kind of like thinking about these questions and processing is like I was saying earlier, I think 
I have a lot of books I really enjoyed, but not as many of just like, oh, like I gotta, not like Murderbot last year where I was like, I have got to get everybody to read this book. I guess the book that I feel most that way about in terms of like a new release is Take a Hint, Danny Brown. And, you know, I probably like Jane Doe better, but it's less like, I feel less like everybody will love this if they like this kind of book. Whereas Take a Hint, Danny Brown, I'm like, if you like romance at all, read this book. Yeah, but I don't, I don't feel like I have as many of those so far. So we'll see how the rest of the year goes reading wise. Then you never know we've got six months left so who knows what new favorites could emerge within that time period. So I think that that will do it for this tag and for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below along with information about how to register to vote if you are a U.S. citizen. And yeah, I think that that will do it. I hope you are having an absolutely lovely day today and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.